up guys welcome in my name is nick and welcome to the channel uh, you join me from behind the wheel of the honda civic but what we aren't doing in this one is we're not doing actually technically any form of racing what we're going to be doing or what i'm going to be doing rather is um sharing with you a start just what i think is going to be the best thing to make you not necessarily a faster racer but a better racer and that's going to be taken off the braking line plain and simple really um it's it's a great way to get you up to about a seven out of ten on most tracks pretty quickly Quickly. it'll give you a good understanding of where you expect the track to go while you're learning it but what i found when i used it many many years ago back in fours of three and four and stuff like that was getting from that seven to an eight or a nine or a ten out of ten in terms of track knowledge was incredibly difficult when you try and take that line away because you rely on it for your breaking points and it's like going all the way back to two out of ten again I um, need to stop using this analogy for out of 10s, but you get, you know what I mean? Like, there's a massive step back in terms of knowledge versus just going straight in without the line on it. Now, from the bits I've played around with on Kyle Limey, the Limey's pretty good uh, around this track at least. I haven't played around with it too much in any other places, but back in the day it used to be pretty questionable. Its breaking points were pretty conservative and its expected speeds through the corners were kind of a bit slow. Um, so what it's going to do is give you the idea of playing with your breaking points and giving you the ability to sort of spot markers and turning points and figuring out the racing line yourself by trial and error if you know what I mean that's kind of the best way to do it we're just watching me go through now this is a lap where I, it took me a few attempts to get it but as you can see we're on lap 9 here we're having a good run through on this one here the the, the numbers in this one are going to be irrelevant um, don't worry if these don't seem a bit slow compared to the um, the spec series ones because this is in free play the BOP is different and all that sort of stuff the tune is not quite the same there's not really a tune on this car we're just going to be looking at the relevance, the numbers relative to themselves so we pushed the 156.5 which is the best I could do give myself about 10 laps to to get a quick time in and we got a 156.5 is still a good pinch point so coming down this turn one here you see it's breaking tending to break around the sort of 100 meter board um around the sort of that there's a patch of tarmac on the right hand side and i'm treating this as the the bits in yellow is sort of where you lift in bits in red you're going a bit too quick and the blue is where you want to accelerate so again coming through this is be turn three it's called barbecue coming up the hill here it's very conservative where it wants you to be in the track it's not really getting you to push the curbs all that much i've found through this one here and it's very conservative where it wants you to break so coming through this called sunrise um or sunset even not sunrise what am i talking about so coming through it's, it's, it's sort of a lift off from coast kind of corner but it was very lazy to get back on through it all here it's putting you kind of over to the right hand side but not quite far enough it's i used more curb than it sort of told me to use in that one they're just out of instinct more than anything else and sort of lifting off see yellow it's sort of lifting we get a bit of power on here again it's not really telling you to use too much curb very lazy getting on the throttle coming up the hill here i'm not going to even worry about this name because i can never pronounce it and the breaking point this one's really early from where it starts turning red for getting you to the thing you need to start slowing down you can push that a lot further so as you can see we're, it's not it's not bad lap is a very conservative lap it's a very safe lap but it's not a quick lap and what you're doing rather than looking around you you're focusing on this little line here see through um, this one's called mine shaft as you come down towards this corner here that's you should be able to do that flat out but it, it goes the yellow off right through that and i can see it causing some people to lift and worry about sliding out and stuff so again through the hairpin at the bottom of the hill there it gets you very in the middle of the track there's a lot more out to the left hand side you can use and should use really and then coming into this last corner it's getting you to break just before the 50 ball which is about right but it's the suggested speed through the corner is very slow and it's a very very tight exit you can use a lot more on the right hand side here so what i'm going to do is now after this one we're just going to check the time which is a two minute nine so we're about five se four seconds four and a half seconds off what i thought um this one i'm going a bit more aggressive when you got a bit more used to the track and um, pushing or so using a bit more curbs pushing the breaking points a little bit further we're a little bit slower through q1 but we, uh, we're not going to worry too much about that or sector one rather uh through uh, the barbecue here so using a bit more curb here pushing it a bit further out we're carrying a bit more speed through the corners again through um sunset here you can see i go a little bit offline here but you can see that we are being just a little bit more progressive on um, this is sort of in the mindset of someone who's been in forza for a few months or a few weeks you've got a good few hours under your belt um but still there's not, not really that level of aggression that you want to get the best sort of times out uh, out of the car basically and to sort of improve it again it's still airing on the side of being very very cautious and a long time of slowing down before you actually get to the apex on this corner here where you're losing a lot a lot of time again still through uh, the mine shaft here you can see we, we hold full throttle on there very very easily i don't know why it goes yellow there it's a very easy corner to go flat and so far in the middle of the track here you tighten that angle up so much you can't carry as much speed as you want i i go more aggressive through uh, cheetah on that one there with the corner like that quick right hander i go a lot more aggressive over the curve 
curb than the lines tell me to. Carry a bit more entry speed here. We get on the throttle a bit early, but again, we're still very, very tight over to the left-hand side. There's a lot more of that curbing you can use safely in this one here. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you a lap quickly with me driving it with the line on, but trying to ignore it as best I can and use my own markers here. So coming down into turn one, we ignore the 100. We break sort of halfway through that bit of tarmac on the right-hand side. We carry a lot more apex speed. We go very aggressive over that curb. You've got loads of room you can use there. So we get on it. You keep to the right-hand side using that curb. Ignore the curb on the left. That's a complete bait. Go way past that breaking point just as you get to the curb in. Break on that one again. Taking a lot more on the left-hand side coming up the hill through towards sunset. As you see, we've already made up seven and a half tenths just through the first sector. So as we're coming up here, we carry a lot more speed than this thing will let you. Again, partly down a tune, but if you get the angle right, you lift off right. You don't need to break really coming into that corner. Maybe a little bit to get the weight onto the nose. You can carry it through there. See a lot more over the right-hand side, breaking just before the red and white barrier. Carrying it through using a lot more of the curb on the inside here. We're powering up. We're up to one and a half seconds improvement just from being a little bit more aggressive. Again, through here, through the S's, we use a lot more aggressive, a lot more curb on the left, a lot more curb on the right. Shift up the fourth coming through there because you can, if you get the tune right and you've got the tyres in the right window, you can use a lot more grip. Here's the big difference. You see how much later I break coming into the hairpin at the top of the hill here. You can break pretty much as soon as you see the red and white curb on the right hand side if you got the angle right. And as you can see, we're coming out here. We're now over two seconds quicker on this lap alone. Coming down through mineshaft, we're looking at just completely easy flat. Keep it over to the left hand side. You don't need to drift that far to the right. You can if you want, but here's important. Go as far left as you can. Use that dirty bit of the track. There's a very faint rubber in line. Use that to show you sort of the route through there. You make this corner so much wider. You can carry a lot more speed through the apex. Get real aggressive through this corner on Cheetah. If you get the suspension right, you can go pretty much fully over that curb while keeping it clean. Breaking just past the 50 here. This is not the best way to take this corner. I messed up a little bit, but the main bit is you can see how far out you can go and still keep the track and keep, still keep the lap clean. And as we race the line, you see 3.4 seconds quicker. So 157 versus the uh, two minutes that we did following, even being slightly aggressive with the braking line. So I would recommend turning it off and getting used to the tracks itself and look for these other markers see here you can see how much easier it is just to pick up there i know as soon as i go past that tarmac on the right hand side i give it a beat and then a break i can do that really every time basically pretty much every time i can hit that point there sometimes you go a little bit deep but then it's all about sort of trying to find speed elsewhere through the track this is what happens we're not perfect we're not machines it's all about reacting to the car and the track and it gives you the option if you know you'll be breaking that far on the right hand side if you're on the left trying to get past someone rather than having to watch where the line is on the right hand side you can go like all right cool so that's i'm breaking around the 100 board just past the 100 on the right if i break at the 100 because i've got a much tighter entry angle i can probably get myself in there and it, it should all work itself out fine so removing the braking line just gives you the ability to play around with this sort of stuff which inherently make you generally just better at the game and you're not getting your eyes off of what the line is telling you to do and what and looking around at what the track is telling you to do so you, you, your eyes are more open to the other cars on the track and where they are and what they might be doing and you can spot when you do it for long enough you can spot people using the braking line because you'll see how early they break and how conservative they are through the corners but yeah I'm waffling on now I'm a waffler I do apologise but yeah this is basically what I would um why I think you should go without the braking line. Um, it will be hard to begin with. You will drive off a lot and you will be slower, but stick with it. If you enjoyed this one, let me know. I, um, if, if this one does well, I'll look at doing some track guides to help you in terms of spotting braking markers and what I'm using because I don't race a waste, racing line on this at all. I do no traction, no ABS and no racing line because, well, I'm a sadist to be honest, but yeah. Um, this has just been a sort of a rambling one here, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, um, drop me a like, leave me a comment, let me know. And uh, yeah, I'll look to see if I can do some more track guys to help you guys out in the future. But thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.